YouTube, welcome to another sewing video. So today we're going to focus on nightgowns and these are flannel nightgowns and I tried to pick the simplest patterns that I could. That's literally a front piece, a back piece, and you're done. So this is the children's one, which is kind of a pillowcase dress uh, sort of style. Um, both of them are made out of store-bought flannel. Um, this one is a vintage simplicity pattern, which you'll see in a bit. Um, overall, I really did enjoy these projects. Um, like, I did them in a day. So, if you want, like, a huge variety of sizes to make, I definitely recommend these two patterns because they're quick and easy to make. Um, the other benefit to these. So, this does not have a designated front or back, which is another plus in its section. The other thing is, as long as the child fits, um, like, width-wise into this, it could, this can start off as a toddler's dress, then kind of tunic, shirt. Um, I would highly recommend if you're going the shirt route because the armholes are not going to be big enough um, of like putting a t-shirt or something underneath, but it would be the flannel. It would be nice and warm to touch, and I like longevity in children's clothing. I can't help it. <laughs> they grow so fast. Speaking of growing fast, um, you'll see a clip at the end of Jarvis who is trying everything to tip my him, my camera over right now because he wants under the hamper in kitten prison um so he's being absolutely adorable i just wanted to show you how big he's gotten since the start of all of this he's huge and i'm still his favorite human so have fun i hope you enjoy this video this does have children and adult sizes and just have fun all right, so we've got the adult nightgown. So I chose this pattern because it was as similar to the ease of the first one as possible. It is four pieces. There's a front and a back, and there is this casing that goes around the neckline and is sewn on the inside in order to make that casing for the drawstring. So I really do like how this pattern is set up. The only concern I have is how narrow... Um, the armholes are so I may or may not have to finagle with that a little bit because I don't like how little room there was even for me so I might have to cut that out a bit more after everything is sewn so this is the back um I figure I'm not going to show all the pieces because the front and back are very very similar um and they each have their casing and then this fabric I saw and I was like, yes, because I was going with a winter theme and does that not look like a gorgeous night sky? So that's what we're going with for the um, adult nightgown. So we're making B, which is the pink one with the drawstring in the front, short in length, just like C. Um, however, I am going to go ahead and add that waistline cinch like an A because I think that would just be a really good silhouette to do um because uh B just has a separate a whole separate um uh belt that you add but I think having something encased when you're sleeping is a lot better of an idea so that's what I'm going to go with so when I was deciding patterns, I wanted something as close to a similar between the adult and child. So this is a toddler set. Ranger, I love you. Are we just going to lay on my fabric? We just lay on my fabric. <laughs> Here's your early ranger tag. This is supposed to be, this is, this is a sign of how I'm going to have my day go today. <laughs> Not the kitten bothering me. Ranger wants all the attention, all the loves. So this is the pattern I chose because um, it is as similar as I could get to the adult pattern. And I really do like kind of like the pillowcase dress setup for nightgowns for kids. So this is a toddler size. So you have to keep in mind of that when I'm talking about everything. So when making children's um, clothing, keep in mind that this is not a flame retardant um, flannel. So, FYI, it is not designed for sleepwear. Um, however, yeah. So, this is 100% cotton flannel. This has got 
just a front and back that is identical so you can actually switch it around it doesn't when you try when you set your own clothes and you can't quite figure out what the front and back is this it doesn't matter because literally the front and back is the same um you could uh cut out a tie that matches but because of flannel and how equally stiff and weak it can be i'm just gonna use cording like i am using for the flannel pants so for my child's nightgown, I've sewn up the side seams with the serger. You can also French seam this part. Um, the next part, I'm going to have my machine set to roll. And I'm going to roll him the bottom and the arms, armholes. So that is my next step. A lot of steps here. First thing, I rolled him. I rolled him the armhole on both sides and the hem. Makes it nice and clean, silky soft, absolutely love it. Now, you're gonna fold over and pin, and then sew with back stitching on each end, the drawstring casing. Feed the casing, or feed whatever you're using as a drawstring through. This is what I'm using. Um, but then fold in half, and stitch right in the middle. Go forward, back, forward, back, cut your strings, and then this way, when you pull on your drawstring, it only pulls on the half you're pulling on, and it makes it a lot easier to tie it. So, I always like my strings extra long, um, because the width of this would actually make a pretty decent shirt for a taller child. Uh, I keep joking that pillowcase dresses are great because of the fact that um, as long as they still fit the width of the item, it can go from being a dress for a toddler at this size to a tunic for four or five to a shirt for about seven, eight. So it's great because of that. Um, of course, when you get to the seven, eight, the armholes are not quite big enough. So I would end up wearing like a t-shirt or a long sleeve underneath it. But again, the straps are pretty long so that it has that ability for the child to grow into it. Um, I like long sustaining items like this because of the fact that you can wear it for years. What the little girl's dress looks like when it is done. It doesn't matter what the front or back is, it is totally reversible. First things first, um, front and back casing. I labeled it because of the fact that, like, it doesn't bleed through. So I can know which one's the front. Um, you're going to put them so that they make a giant circle. You're going to sew the ends. And then on the outer edge of the ring, you're going to um, hem it in some way. I'm just going to roll hem it because the serger's already set up to do that from another project, or from the child's project. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll hem this. Front panel of the nightgown. So on this center fold, you need to put two buttonholes about the size of my thumb right there um, on either side for the drawstring. And that is about it for this part. So I'm going to go ahead and put those buttonholes in. The holes are done, which means that now I can get on to the next part. So I'm going to sew the front and back together at the shoulder and then down the sides. And so it should almost be a complete dress right there, but then I need to add the facing. So, um, I will be right back. So I said that I was worried about the armholes and that uh, I tried this on and that's unfounded. So I'm going to roll hem the armholes and the hem and then be right back. So I love this way of doing a curved neckline um, drawstring casing. So my buttonholes are here. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around. And then when I get done, I can flip it over and tack it down like this to make a complete casing. So I'm going to go ahead and do those two steps. Sew it around this way first and then fold it over and tack it over again. And then I'm all done with the neckline. Look like a bright, starry night. All right, winter is here, which means that everything gets darker quicker. So I'm going to make this quick. So this is my drawstring. It has already got the cord in it. Now we need to figure out um, the cinch towards the bottom. And if you don't want to do that, skip this step. Okay. Buddies for sewing are almost mandatory for this. So I put this on and then kind of marked with a pin where I wanted it. Then what do you do once you figure out what that spot is? Because do not trust the pattern because everyone has different amounts of curves. 
and nothing would be worse than to follow that and then find out that that is not your size. So I'm going to say that this is where I want it, which is a good portion underneath my arm. So I'm going to figure out where that, that point is. So I'm going to go, oh, this is so much fabric. Mm. Let's say, let's try right here. Okay. I'm going to find the opposite side over here. Okay. Match it so that I'm pinching in the correct spot. Okay. I have this in either hand and then I'm slowly turning this in halfway inside out. This is a lot easier with an extra pair of hands, let me tell you. Okay. So you see where my pin is, which means I overestimated a tad. So I'm just going to roll upward keeping the same tension on either side, okay? And then I'm going to make sure right, that I am even from the underarm down. And it looks like I mostly am, which is always good. Okay. Now, move the excess fabric off so that you're laying flat. the baby pins and across the table where my you can kind of see ranger's tail has been guarding them so this is my pin that was supposed to mark kind of where I wanted it and then I'm just going to pin all the way around this does not need to be perfect because Again, most things aren't. Um, just make sure that it is right for your size. So I would recommend after pinning it, trying it on with the pins facing outward to see if that's the right position of where you want this other casing to be. Okay. And then if it's in the right spot, you sew it in a circle, but you leave that, that much of a hole in the center front. When you've left that hole in the center front, then you want to stitch in between that center front so that you've made a casing with essentially faux buttonholes in it. But I will show that again in a moment. So I sewed all the way around, um, leaving these small holes and then the center casing. So in order to feed this through, because it obviously doesn't feed from this side, you're going to go in from the right side and push it in. So, and then feed all the way around and then pull it out this side when you're done. Um, other than that, I will show you this in the daytime tomorrow. This is the nightgown all done. It's threaded. The armholes ended up actually being perfect. Not that I'm going to wear this model it off because it is a nightgown. Um, it's very soft. It'll get softer as it's worn. Um, it has nice edges on the serger. Overall, I really did enjoy this project. If you would like to see more videos like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Here is Ranger in his natural happy cat roadkill position.